we deserve answers. What happened with the transfer of Paul Bernardo? Who made the decision? When did we change the qualifications? And why are we giving serial killers, you know, any kind of a cushion, you know? But it um, doesn't look like we're going to get those answers because the Liberal NDP government, with support of the bloc, um, have blocked a committee investigation into how all of this happened with the transfer from maximum prison to a medium security facility. And look, the victims' families, uh, Canadians, overwhelmingly, they want to know how this happened. It's been an absolute disgraceful chapter, but nonetheless, um, it doesn't look like they want that you know, those questions coming out. Let me bring in Dane Lloyd, MP for St. Albert, also Shadow Minister of Emergency Preparedness. Good to have you. Thanks for having me. Uh, it was your tweet that I saw that I thought, are, are you kidding? You're gonna, you can't even die on this? Like, what hill will they die on? What is the right reasoning that they would not want this committee going ahead, other than embarrassment? Well, I think you've hit the nail right on the head. I think the government's embarrassed by this, and I think they want to do everything possible to bury this issue. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want the Minister of Public Safety to appear and answer questions at committee. And they certainly don't want to hear from representatives of victims' families to hear from their perspectives on, you know, how this hurt them, how the decision of Correctional Services Canada hurt them. And and uh, certainly they don't want to hear recommendations on uh, how we can fix this problem going forward. And so what were the reasonings? I mean, these committees are held, you know, you vote on it. I can understand the block, the block, I don't know what they stand for other than separating from Canada, but what were some of the reasons as to why we wouldn't look into this? Well, they're, they're not giving us any reasons. They, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to give us reasons. They just want to shut this down. And uh, we've been pu pushing for this for months. It started back in June. Uh, right before Parliament rose, we had a motion on the floor to examine this issue. They canceled the meeting without even consulting us. They just canceled the meeting to prevent us from talking about this. We tried to bring the committee back over the summer so that we could investigate this. They refused. And for the past two weeks since Parliament's been back, we've been pushing every single meeting to get an investigation going on this. And every single time we've been shut down by this Liberal government. And so is that it? Is this where this goes? Because I remember back in the day, because I was old enough and I was around when they were looking for Paul Bernardo and his car, and it was scary. I was living in Hamilton in that time. It was a completely different, if you were alive during that time, you only say the name Paul Bernardo, people understand. That guy never deserves anything. He can stay where he was in maximum security. And so does this just become a done deal, like a thing, like it's just normal now? Well, you know, the Conservatives, the only true opposition party left in this country on the federal level, uh, we're not going to let this uh, go. Uh, we're going to keep fighting for this. And uh, I think we need Canadians to start speaking up and putting pressure on, on their members of parliament, be they NDP members or liberal members, to get a real study in on this issue. We need Canadians to start writing into their MPs and sending a message that this is unacceptable. We want accountability and we want transparency. And that's what conservatives are going to keep fighting for. Well, I mean, the, the, the go-to spin has been, you know, we can't interfere with the process and we don't get involved. But I, I do clearly remember, and it was my point before the, I forgot, is that Carla Homolka, when she was found to be having pajama parties and, and, you know, making a complete mockery of a system that she had already completely took advantage of, um, they did take action. action, And it was the Liberal government back then, and, and I think it was Lawrence McCauley, but, but I, I do remember, they just changed, she went back. And I remember also Miss McClintock, who killed Tory Stafford when she was found in a healing lodge. Uh, Bill Blair, she went into medium security. So the government can make changes when it wants. It's just not doing it. Certainly not with this case. Well, absolutely, and that's why you know our great, my great colleague from Niagara Falls, uh, Tony Baldinelli, has put forward a private members' bill. Uh, to change the Correctional Services Act to remove this uh, this new bill that the Liberals passed in 2019, which basically mandates correction services to put uh, offenders in the least restrictive environment. And we believe that that this is the legislative change that allowed for Paul Bernardo to be transferred from a maximum security to a medium security prison. So we're going to keep fighting for that. Um, I think back in the spring, you know, some people wanted to give the Liberals the benefit of the doubt. You know, maybe it wasn't their decision. They didn't know. But I think uh, the Liberals' true colors are showing now because the fact that they don't want to have a study, they don't want to investigate this, I think it's exposing that uh, they feel vulnerable on this and they don't want transparency. They don't want accountability, and, and it's showing. Well, accountability, it's such a nice word. I just don't see much of it anymore, anywhere. And that's what's so frustrating to Canadians because we do hear from them. I hear from my listeners and they say, like, how is this happening? And they do speak out. It's just 
we don't get the change. And, and so I, I, my concern is as we move further and further away from this crime, as younger and younger generations who don't really connect with it, maybe don't understand who we're talking about. I mean, there's not many in this country, thankfully, like Paul Bernardo. Uh, you know, and if you can't keep even those people locked up, then where are we going? Well, and I think this, uh, you know, this calls into question the whole concept and principle of victims' rights in this country. Like this, what are those? Do those one exist? of the worst, most notorious killers in Canadian history. And if the victims' families weren't even uh, informed or consulted until after the decision had uh, <clears throat> taken place, after the transfer had taken place, what about all the other victims in this country of all the other crimes? Uh, we need to take a stand for victims' rights in this country, and and victims' rights can no longer take second place to the rights of criminals. And uh, that's a stand that we're, as Conservatives, making in the House of Commons, and we're not going to back down on that. And so just quickly before I let you go, if you form government, would you move Paul Bernardo back? We'll do everything in our power to get that monster back in maximum security prison. All right, victims' rights would be a real refreshing change in this country. Very much appreciate your time. We'll keep an eye on this. Thank you. Thank you. That's Dan Lloyd. Um, MP for St. Albert and Shadow Minister of Emergency Preparedness.